All right. All right. So as you know, we are health, we are heal lifestyle academy. These are the four areas that we deal with health and wellness, effective communication, anger resolution, leadership, and personal development. And we have started a series called 24 Medicines Not Found in Pharmacies. 24 Meds Not Found in Pharmacies. And we have covered about six, five to six weeks already. And today we would continue with the series. Um, before we do, there are two things I'd like to say to you. Thing number one, uh, please take notes. Take notes, the shortest pencil is longer than the longest memory. And the second thing is to stay away from the five worst words in the world. And the five worst words in the world are, I have heard that before. Uh, that creates closed mindedness as opposed to open mindedness. There are also two promises I'd like to make to you. Promise number one, uh, you will definitely learn something today that you will be able to use right away, right away. And promise number two, I'm available to work with you further should you see the need. At the end of the presentation, you would find our contact information. Let's quickly go through our disclaimer. The information provided in this presentation is intended for general informational purposes only and should not be considered as a substitute for professional medical advice, diagnosis, or treatment. As a naturopathic doctor, I am sharing insights and suggestions based on my expertise in natural health and wellness. However, it's important to consult with a medical doctor before making any significant changes to your health regimen, especially if you have underlying medical conditions, you're taking uh, medications, or you have specific health concerns. All right, so as we said today, we are continuing with the series 24 meds not found in pharmacies, in pharmacies. And at the end of the presentation, you will be shocked uh, to know how hiking is medicine, hiking, hiking, why hiking is medicine, how it can benefit you. So we want to discover the health benefits of nature's therapy. Hiking is called nature's therapy. So at the end of the presentation, we want you to feel like we added value to you. Hiking is medicine. All right, so we said in this series, we'll explore various aspects that can be considered as medicine without the use of pharmaceuticals. And these non-pharmaceutical methods play a vital role in maintaining and improving our health and well-being. And we have been using over the past uh, weeks uh, the definition for medicine as being something that affects your well-being. Medicine, something that affects your well-being, and that, uh, that effect could be a negative effect or a positive effect on you but something that affects your well-being. So let's dive right in. What is hiking? What is hiking? What's a good definition for hiking? Well, uh, hiking, as you would naturally know, it's a form of walking, uh, often in natural environments, and the walking is for leisure, for exercise, or exploration. So hiking is a form of walking, often in natural environments for leisure, exercise, or exploration, right? Those three things, you walk in natural environments, leisure, exercise, or exploration. So why is hiking considered as medicine? Good question. Hiking is considered as medicine because it combines physical activity mental relaxation, and the benefits of being in nature. And all of these affects your well-being. This is why hiking is considered as medicine, as medicine, right? 
Uh, it affects your entire well-being through physical activity. You have to be walking, mental relaxation, and you'll find that your mind is more relaxed uh, in forested areas or hilly areas. Uh, you hear the birds, you hear the bees buzzing, you're not hearing too many motor vehicles. You might hear an airplane pass overhead, but it's mental relaxation and is the benefit of being in nature along with sunshine and the cool breeze on your skin to clean your skin is very powerful. Mm -hmm. All right, so why is uh, hiking important? Well, hiking is important because it can enhance your overall health and well-being by engaging both your body and your mind. It engages both your body and your mind. All right, so let's go into it. Uh, we're first, we're gonna deal with the physical health benefits of hiking, physical health benefits of hiking. First, we could look at the cardiovascular health aspect, right? We're dealing with things that strengthen your body, cardiovascular health. Uh, hiking increases your heart rate and improves your circulation, right? Something because we have discovered in science that sitting is the new death. Sitting is the new death, right? If you sit for half an hour, you should get up and walk or move about for about five minutes. If you sit for an hour, you want to do it for about 10 minutes or so to get your, your blood circulating, right? So when you, when you hike, you increase your heart rate and this will improve your circulation. You also would lower your blood pressure. If you have better blood circulation, this will tend to lower your blood pressure and reduce the risk of heart disease. Reduce the risk of heart disease. All right, uh, muscle tone and strength. Let me give a disclaimer. There is no guarantee you're gonna look like this guy if you start hiking or keep hiking, but you, you will get the tone that based on the effort you put in, right? Walking uh, exercises every muscle in your body. Every muscle in your body is exercised when you walk. So muscle tone and strength, hiking engages multiple muscle groups, especially in the legs, your core, that's the stomach area, and your back, and your back. And let me just say this, um, we covered this in one of our previous on our previous programs, uh, about 50% of the muscles and the nerves are in your legs, uh, in your legs. You get old from your feet up, from your feet up. Your legs are your foundation. So that's why I was hoping that more people would have been early on time for this presentation. Uh, oh, uh, forgive me, I didn't turn my camera on. Please forgive me. Yeah, I wasn't trying to hide this. For God, there we go. Now you can see my beautiful face. Amen, amen. Yeah, so hiking engages multiple muscle groups, especially in your legs, your core, and your back. Hiking helps uh, help you to build endurance and flexibility. Endurance and flexibility. As we get older, our muscles um, begin to seize up on us because they're not being used. That's why you need to be walking uh, hiking in particular in a nice, cool area. Uh, hiking could also strengthen your body through weight management. Weight management, because hiking burns calories which aid in weight loss or maintenance. Weight loss or maintenance. Hiking on different terrain increases your caloric burn and challenges the body. That's why you, you would tend to see that soldiers, uh, people in the military, people on, on SWAT teams for police departments uh, tend to be so fit because they do a lot of training on rough terrain, walking, running, what have you, and your body gets naturally flexible and strong, right, in a natural way. All right, so we covered the physical aspects of hiking. Now we look at the mental, the mental benefits of hiking. And we are calling this healing your mind, healing your mind. The first one we look at is stress 
relief. Nature and physical activity together reduces stress and anxiety. I remember when we were pastoring in Texas, uh, we a, a friend of ours gave us about three to five acres of land. Uh, he had bought about 25 or so. And we went there to begin to build a, a country home. And I can tell you that every time we left that place to go back onto the main road or the highway, you felt a difference. The traffic lights felt as though they were, they were uh, blinding light in your face. Right, because you, you you didn't have all that sensory activity out in, in the wild. You're hearing the birds, you could hear from miles around the bees. I mean, it was so relaxing, no anxiety whatsoever. Uh, the peaceful environment helps to clear your mind and so to help to relieve stress. You also have improved mood, an improved mood. Uh, this is because there is a release of endorphins, uh, which are the body's natural mood enhancers, right? So the name endorphin comes from the Latin term endogenous or endogenous, uh, endogenous morphine, because uh, these uh, endorphins uh, are produced in your body and they mimic the actions of the opioid killer, uh, painkiller, morphine. However, uh, the endorphins don't have the same uh, addictive properties as opioids do, right? And opioids simply is a class of substances that reduce uh, your physical pain, your psychological pain, and even your emotional pain, right? So the body releases the endorphins, which are the natural, the body's natural mood enhancers. And this helps to combat depression and enhance overall mental well being. There's also the enhanced cognitive functioning. Uh, hiking stimulates creativity and problem solving abilities. It also helps to improve your memory and your concentration. There are also social benefits of hiking. Social benefits of hiking. We look at strengthening relationships. Um, hiking is a good place to go with your family, go with your loved one. You know, you get to walk and talk and relax. And both of you have endorphins flowing through. It's a, it's a really, really good activity. More of us need to be involved in it. Hiking with friends or family strengthens the bonds through shared experiences. Uh, there's also uh, community building. Joining hiking groups or clubs fosters a sense of belonging and shared purpose. So uh, I think um, Elder Anderson uh, started uh, at, at the Kanye Church, started a, sort of a walking club on Sundays, I believe, uh, to walk around the church, right? So that's a form of hiking. It's not, not really out there in nature per se, but it's, it's a good way to build community as well, to see people outside of church and learn, get to know them, get to know them. Uh, there's also social interaction, social interaction, where you're meeting, you're meeting new people with similar interests during the hikes, and this promotes social well-being, social well-being. Hiking and connection with nature, right? So hiking causes to have a reconnection with nature, right? You get to, to see the importance of, of nature. Being in nature uh, reduces your stress as recovered, increases your feelings of happiness. And this is something that we all want. There's also deeper appreciation Hiking offers an opportunity to observe and appreciate natural beauty, natural beauty, which is very good for your eyes. There's something also called forest bathing, bathing or having a forest bath. And it's a practice from Japan 
called Shinrin Yuku. Uh, it involves mindful walking, and that simply means just not just walking through the forest but uh, or through the field, but being aware of if you see a deer or you see a rabbit or a squirrel looking at the leaves on the tree. It's mindful walking in the forest, and this has proven to have uh, therapeutic benefits, right? And it also involves spending time in the forest with the mindset to relax and to connect with nature. It involves being quiet and calm, observing nature, and most importantly, breathing deeply. Most of us do not breathe deeply the way we should. We have shallow breathing and our lungs get weaker and weaker and weaker, right? But we need to, de to breathe deeply and we'll see why um, as we go along. But in terms of the forest bathing, uh, you want to use all of your five senses to take in God's creation, right? You want to listen to the birds, you want to touch the trees, you want to smell the flowers uh, and taste the air, taste the air. And to talk about deep breathing, uh, breathe, uh, breathing pure, fresh air tends to vitalize your body. Just for a moment, if you are feeling weak and tired or you have some kind of pain, just try to breathe deeply, right? Have your chest up. And as you inhale, the lungs fill and the stomach goes down and out. Hold it for about four seconds and release another four seconds. And you'll begin to see that your pain is subsiding and you begin to feel revitalized because when you breathe in a shallow way, enough oxygen is not getting to the blood to move the blood along. The blood becomes thick and heavy. That's why you feel tired and sleepy, right? Practice breath, uh, deep breathing. So the most abundant sources of clean air are found in mountainous regions or dense forests near large bodies of water and in remote areas far from industrial activity and traffic. I, I can attest to that. Let's talk about fresh air, right? So here's one of the main reasons you want to be out in the forest, or in the field, hiking, of course, where it's safe. Uh, trees refresh the oxygen that is in the air. So while we exhale carbon dioxide, which is vital for the nutrients for plants, they give us oxygen. That's why it's good to have uh, plants in your home, especially uh, the one they call the snake plant or the mother-in-law tongue plant. And that's very, very good for your home or one of those ferns or palms. It, it really, really changes up the air in your home. Very good to breathe. Uh, so this, the natural cycle of us exhaling carbon dioxide and plants and trees uh, giving us oxygen was designed by God. And it, it ensures a continuous supply of fresh oxygen, which is essential for our health. We want to look briefly at some long-term health benefits of hiking. Long-term health benefits of hiking. So regular hiking can prevent or manage conditions like heart disease, diabetes, and osteoporosis, osteoporosis. There's also the idea of longevity. Those who hike regularly often enjoy longer, healthier lives, longer, healthier lives. Uh, hiking also improves your sleep patterns, your sleep patterns, regular physical activity from hiking helps to regulate sleep cycles and increases energy levels. So here are some recommended uh, hiking practices, recommended hiking practices. You want to prepare uh, properly 
and you want to choose trails that match your fitness level. Don't try to go up a, a long mountain when you can't walk to the mailbox, right? You want to choose trails that match your fitness level. You want to wear suitable footwear and carry water and food. Carry water and food. That in terms of proper preparation, you also want to have two uh, walking canes, probably a, a, a small um, toolkit, a first aid kit, um, water bottle, flashlight, you know, sleeping bag. You never know what can happen. You know, a compass and, and all that, a map, all that's part of it, depending on where you're going, right? Um, we are saying that you need to hike safely and effectively and do so through a gradual progression. So start with easier hikes at places in your neighborhood that may have a, a, a hiking trail. Uh, start with easier hikes and gradually increase difficulty as your fitness improves. So here are some safety tips. You want to stay on marked trails and inform others of your hiking plans and carry a map or a GPS, a map or a GPS. Let others know what your hiking plans are. Stay on the marked uh, hiking trails. So tips for incorporating hiking into a busy schedule. Uh, make time for nature by going on local hikes, like we just said. Um, you want to hike around your church uh, on Indicator. They have uh, hiking trails uh, off of uh, Klondike Road. Um, start locally. Find nearby trails for quick and accessible hikes after work or on weekends. After work on a weekend, right? Uh, in terms of a weekend getaway, you can plan trips or weekend hikes to explore new locations <coughs> Excuse me, and enjoy extended time in nature. You also want to think of hiking as a routine, not just an event, all right? Because it gives you all of the good reasons to be hiking. Uh, schedule regular hikes, treating them as essential to your weekly routine as any other exercise, as any other exercise. All right, so I'm not sure how many of us have ever gone hiking before, all right? Um, but we are saying to plan your next hike, right? Set a goal for your next hike um, in terms of the distance, the frequency, or the location, right? Have a personal goal. Uh, we'd like to give you a chance to share. If anybody here has ever gone hiking, um, you want to tell us your favorite spot or experience while you're hiking. Now is your time to unmute quickly and, and tell us. We'll be first. Yes, I've gone hiking before. Mm -hmm. um, it was when I was living in Greensboro, North Carolina. We went to this um, place that's beyond Winston Salem, and we climbed the mountain. And mm -hmm. when we got when we got on top of the mountain, you can oversee the city. Wow! It was it was close to Virginia, but yeah, that's that's the most remarkable experience. But I've gone hiking many times before because I used to be a part of Pathfinders and we did many mm -hmm. things. And even as a single uh, person with working with the singles ministry, we mm -hmm. would do hiking. So I have some experience with that. Um, but now that I'm older, I would love to go, but you know, you gotta be super, super careful now. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, but that's, so, that's my experience. And how did you feel when you were in nature away from the city lights or from the cars and trucks? How, how, how did you feel? You know, you just take your mind completely away from your daily daily cares and concerns. You just, you felt free and you felt good after you, you actually felt good when you got on top of that mountain. You're just amazed that you could, you could do the, the distance, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know, and, and, um, and even coming down, you still have to have some strength to brace yourself. Otherwise you will topple over. <laughs> so which which took which took strength but just the idea that um you're out there and it's a form of exercise and it just you you're just introduced constantly introduced and being a part of nature 
And you do sense the presence of God when you're out there, you know, mm -hmm. because you're not distracted by the things of the city and the busyness of the world. It just gives you a peaceful mindset. And then you just kind of, um, from that point on, you, whenever you do, uh, can, whenever you plan for another vacation, mm -hmm. it's not necessarily hiking, but it's just getting away in nature. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, it could be the beach where you sit by the ocean and, and experience the, the the rushing of the water and the, you, mm -hmm. you hear the birds singing and flying above you and just those kinds of things. And what I consider to be a vacation is not going somewhere where you party. <laughs> the vacations are just being out in nature and enjoying what God has given you, which is all part of the eight laws of health. Amen. 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 Yeah. And you know, that's a good point you touched on because uh, when you, when you go out, to hike, you're you're covering uh, exercise, mm -hmm. your fresh air. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. What else? What else? Um, w water, because you, you you'll get thirsty, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Nutrition, nutrition. You, you got to eat nutrition because you yeah. take a you take a lunch. Yeah, you you, you got to eat well. You got to eat well, mm -hmm. right? And after you finish hiking, you 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 want you want to rest because because you're tired. And, 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 and a witness, because usually when we would go places, we talk to people, mm -hmm. you know, we let them know where we're from and all that kind of stuff. And usually the conversations ends up, ends up talking about God in some kind of way, mm -hmm. you know, because usually when you meet people who are doing the same as you're doing, their mindset's a little different. And so yes. the connection yeah. happens. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and there's also trust in God, right? You wanna, there you go. We're going to keep you safe out there. Powerful. Yeah. All right. Thank you for sharing, Auntie Lynn. Um, anybody else like to share your favorite hiking spot? If you've ever gone hiking or hiking or your experience. All right. So let me share mine. In the meantime, I've gone hiking um, as a pathfinder as well and a master guide. So, uh, we hiked one time, I think, for like five miles. And it wasn't until after we finished, we realized how much, how many miles we hiked and how many miles to go back, right? <laughs> But, but somehow the going back seems faster than the going because you already covered the ground. You already covered the ground. And, um, you, you know, you get to see a lot of nice birds that you would normally see out there. Um, you feel a cool breeze. And that's the quiet. You can hear yourself think. And, of course, you know, you, you will burn some calories, you burn some good calories. Yeah. So I've, I've had some wonderful times hiking. Um, and also cycling right there in Klondike Road. It, it, it was a cycle hike uh, several times. I was with a cycle group. All right. Is there anybody that want to share quickly? I can't believe the only until in myself ever went hiking. Any more sharers? No? Okay, let's move on. All right. So here are some planning tips if you would take our advice and go hiking, um, some planning tips. Like I said, you wanna get a compass, a map, let people know where you're going, um, Google the place to see what it's about, to see what uh, what kind of dangers there might be, parking place, um, if it's raining, if there are any waterfalls, landslides, you know, you want to plan and organize, uh, preferably go with a group and uh, not just women, you know, a mixture of men as well, right? Go with a group. All right, so here are some, look at some biblical perspectives on hiking. In Psalm 23, 1 to 3, right? Most, all of us, I think most of us know all the six verses, right? But it says, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. And when you think of a shepherd, you think of sheep, as you see in the picture, and a shepherd and sheep don't live in a house, right? They are outdoors on the field with nature. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. When we go hiking, we see green pastures. We see uh, little, little brooks, still waters. Mm -hmm. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Right, so this is just one text that alludes to hiking out in nature. Right, God put the first man and woman 
in a garden. That's where their home was, in a garden. And that's why, you know, we're encouraged to move out into the country, away from the cities. We weren't really created to live in the cities, but in a country where you could really be in tune with God and with nature. All right, so here is the spiritual connection with that, with that um, psalm. Hiking allows us to reflect on God's creation and experience his peace, his peace. There are other examples we've talked about Adam and Eve. Uh, many biblical figures found solace and guidance in nature, such as Adam and Eve, uh, before they sinned, of course. Then we have uh, Jesus Christ retreating to the mountains to pray out in nature, out in nature. All right. So we have come to the end of our presentation. Uh, some of us came on a bit later than others, but we are glad that you're here. Um, this video will be up on our YouTube channel and you'll be able to get what you may have missed, but we, we're almost to the end. And here are some hiking benefits, physical health, mental well-being, social connections, and spiritual growth, right? All these are hiking benefits that you may not have thought of before. And we want to encourage you to take action, uh, start making plans to get out of the house. Uh, there's something called building sickness, where you're either working or living in your home and you're in there 24 seven, just uh, in inhaling the uh, recycled air that you have breathed out, the carbon dioxide you, you breathe out, right? That's not the best health plan to have. Uh, I wanna close off this with the deceptive allure of poison ivy, all right? So one of the things you have to be aware of when you go hiking is to recognize poison ivy. Right, uh, Second Corinthians chapter eleven and verse fourteen says, "And no marvel, for Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light." So he here is a contextual insight. Just as poison ivy has beautiful leaves and pretty berries that hide its harmful effects. The devil can disguise himself as something attractive and good, leading to spiritual harm. So, so, so right there, you're seeing we're not in nature, but if you go into nature, you could find spiritual gems such as this, poison ivy, right? We all know how it's itches and scratches, but if you look at it, you know what? It looks nice, nice little berries, but most people, when they touch it, they get nasty sores right? Nasty pussy sores, and they're in discomfort for a pretty long time. And in the same way, the devil can disguise himself as something attractive and good, leading to spiritual harm. And this reminds us to be vigilant. Uh, 1 Peter 5, 8 says, be sober, be vigilant for your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walking about, seeking whom he may devour. So the devil is also hiking. He's on a hike to see whom he can devour, all right? And so it reminds us to be vigilant and discerning in our walk with God, just as we are or should be cautious in nature to avoid things that appear beautiful but may cause harm. All right, are there any questions or Something you'd like to share with us before we, before we go? Anyone? Anyone? Now with your time. Don't be shy. All right. Nobody. Wonderful. Okay. So we, we're going to end with prayer the way we started. And uh, I'm, I might be willing to ask if there's any particular prayer request that you may have. Now is the time to share. Please pray for I'm um, Sister Irina. Please pray for my family. Okay. We're praying for Sister Irina and the family. And if you want to contact us, uh, there's our contact information. Um, this is our website, our YouTube uh, channel, Heal Lifestyle Academy, and our phone number to contact us. Only con contact us. All right. All right. So we only have one prayer request, Sister Irina. So we're going to. 
approach God's throne. Our Heavenly Father, thank you so much for being with us uh, these past uh, almost 35 minutes. Thank you for those who signed on today. We pray that what was presented added value to them. Be with those who were trying to make it but couldn't get on for whatever reason. Uh, let them see the recording on YouTube and have the same effect upon them. Thank you for being with Sister Irena and her family right now, blessing them individually. You know the situations that they're facing. You know how much she loves her children. And Lord, she's asking that they would be obedient to her, obedient to you, to follow you all the way. The devil has them um, on a spin cycle. And if it's just one thing, it's another. Uh, allowing the Lord to come to their senses like the, rich, the, like the prodigal son did. Before it is too late, Be all of the other families uh, here, the other parents who have children, who may have silent prayer requests, Lord, be with their children, with their grandchildren, uh, all the family members, Lord, help us to live lives that will exemplify us uh, showing a good influence to everyone we meet. Uh, thank you for the day almost ending and a new day beginning at sunset. Thank you for giving us a good night's rest. We bless and praise your name for Christ's sake. Amen. Amen. All right, folks, thank you for being here. See you next Thursday uh, for our health seminar. For those who are on our WhatsApp group, we're also having our Bible study on Tuesday at 7. We are on the book of Revelation. I think this coming week uh, we are on chapter 5. Chapter 5, mm -hmm. and you can go to our website to get the handouts i um i have some chapters one to five on our website raise my lid.com raise my lid.com um, if you go there you would see the handouts when you go on the website look for bible study and you go you'll find um the fifth handout lesson five in preparation for this coming tuesday next tuesday god willing at 7 p.m Okay, people. so I'm sorry. So the handout is is there already for chapter five? Yes, it's it's there already. Oh, great! Thank you. It's, it's there. It's there. Okay. It's there. So I like to study way ahead of time. Okay, that's all right. That's okay. Yeah. So I, I want folks to study ahead of time so they can come with questions. I'm returning it, but everything is well so far. Hope everything is all well with you. Anyway, good buddy. I'll talk to you later. Thanks for calling. Bye bye. <laughs> oh, I, I thought that was, that was for me. So that's for me. All right. Yeah. So I'm glad to have all of us on. I think I saw my friend Monica. She left probably. Thank you for being here. Thank you for being Auntie Lynn, Mr. Pansy, Brother Kirby, Sister, um, just Mrs. Shaco, Doctor Gentle, Sister Irena, Auntie Lynn. What, what did I miss? What did I miss? Doctor Rayborn, Joda, Miracle. Thanks for being here. Have a good night. Have a good rest of the week. And a good Sabbath when it comes. God bless. God bye -bye. bless. Bye-bye. Good night, all. Good night. Good night. Bye, Nadaj. Bye, babe. Bye-bye. <laughs> bye. -bye. bye.